What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road, but when he saw him he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged him. Then he lifted him up on his own animal and took him and an inn and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was the neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We would be seriously mistaken if we thought that the Jews, at the time of Jesus and now of course, did not have a feeling of mercy and charity that goes beyond the fulfillment of the basic requirements of the laws of Moses, of the Ten Commandments. For Jews, and also for Muslims, and I suppose the same for Buddhists, and of course also for atheists, this feeling of charity, of going beyond the minimum due, exists. It would be unfair and it would be the fruit of ignorance to think that these great religions, I don't know if all the religions on earth, but also those who have the religion of non-God, the atheists, do not have this feeling of charity. It is linked to the human nature, at least in some members of the human species. What is the difference then between the, at the time, Jew and the Christian? What is the difference? It is very important to understand this difference. The Lord gives some examples in the parable of the Good Samaritan. For this priest, who I am absolutely sure, although he is an example, was a law-abiding priest, a priest who, of course, kept the Ten Commandments, who fulfilled the enormous number of requirements of the Jewish law, which were more than 600 precepts. For this priest, charity or mercy or going beyond the minimum was required, was not a precept, it was a matter that was certainly advised, but it was not obligatory, and this is precisely the difference between them and us. When we Catholics go to confession, those Catholics who go to confession, well, when we go to confession, we generally do it following the scheme of the Ten Commandments of Moses. We must not forget it, it is a basic moral scheme, valid for us, but Jewish. Moses, that is to say, Jewish, and that scheme, it established that it is a sin to steal, but it is not established that it is a sin not to give alms. For the Jew, and for this priest, or for this Levite, who was a Pharisee, or a Jewish scribe, also a very rigorous fulfillment of the law, it was a sin to steal. They would not have done what the bandits had done, and if they had done it, they would have known that they would have done wrong. They would not have beaten that man, leaving him half dead. They would not have robbed that man. That was what their moral law obliged them to do, but their law did not oblige them to take care of a wounded man, to give alms. Their law exhorted them, advised them, encouraged them, but did not oblige them, 
And now I think that in the view of this, we must necessarily ask ourselves, are we, from the ethical point of view, Jews or Christians? Without detracting from the Jews, are we Jews or Christians? Many Christians, many good Catholics, good in the sense of that they are still, thank God, Catholics who fulfill their family and professional obligations, who go to Mass, who go to confession, but they do not have in their conscience, they do not have the requirement, not the advice, but the requirement of charity. Charity is still, for the mass majority of good Catholics, still an option. Of course, we hear it in many homilies, we have learned it since we were children, but we learn it and we hear it as an option. Instead, it is an obligation. Instead, it is an obligation. Who examines his conscience and who confesses for the good he has failed to do? We examine our conscience, we examine ourselves. we confess to it, for the evil we have done. Ten Commandments, that is the basis, but the basis for a Jew, not for a Christian, not for a Catholic. When we begin Mass, we say, and we confess, we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thought and in my word, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. We say it very well at the beginning of Mass. I have sinned by what I failed to do. And yet, that in the usual examination of conscience is completely omitted. We must not do good that we cannot do. I cannot have a guilty conscience because there has been a terrorist attack, or because there was a bishop in prison, or because there is a hunger, or because there is war. I'm not responsible for that, a good that I cannot do, because it is not within my reach. But the good that I can do, even if it's little, and without that meaning that I have to give everything and go and live under a bridge like a beggar, but the good that I can do, I have the duty to do it. And this is pure Catholicism, the Catholicism of Jesus. This is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Let us learn, therefore, this teaching, this lesson. When you examine your conscience before you go to confession, listen. Have you done the good that you could do? Not the impossible good. What can you do? What can I do? We're so little. But the possible good. Have I done the good I could do? That was within my reach. Many times it was not even a great effort. It was within my reach. Have I done the good I could do? When you visit Spain, the big cities, especially the small towns. Today, many of them are practically abandoned. Possibly the only thing left standing are their churches. They're not decorated as the great cathedrals, but all of them, even in their humility, are beautiful. Austere, especially in Castile. Pure stone, as it's our character, but decorated with a beautiful altarpiece or with paintings that at the time were expensive. Why? Because there were peasants who were poor, who had just enough to eat. Their little piece of land, their cow, their sheep, their chickens, their pig. Those peasants knew that they had the duty to help the church with its needs, the duty to help the neighboring need, and they knew that there was a law that came from their faith and they accepted, which was to give the tithe. Today, it has disappeared. Today, we consider that it given alms an option, that helping the poor, that helping the church, or that helping a family member who is having a hard time, or that helping a friend, and I'm not only talking about money, but even more importantly, time, that helping someone is an option. This is not Catholicism. The parable of the Good Samaritan says it very clearly. He who wants to follow Jesus has to live like Jesus who gave himself for us, who being rich became poor, who being God became a slave and has passed for one of many. We have to imitate Christ in his mercy love. We have to do the minimum that the commandments establish. We do not kill, do not steal, do not lie, but we cannot be satisfied with a minimum. We cannot consider that helping in so far as we can help is an optional matter. That is not Catholic. Helping is an obligation. We are Catholics and for us to love our neighbor is a duty and not a beautiful thing to do that some here does, but something that, to the extent of our possibilities, we all have to do.
may be so 